Many thanks for choosing us. Political campaigning for the 2024 general elections has been hard hit by the recent frequent intermittent power cuts, which has become known as Dumso. John Mahama's building Ghana tour has had to endure the power outages during the tour of the Great Accra and OT regions. The Nile Jima shed some light on the impact of the power cuts on the tour. The frequent unannounced power cuts in recent times continue to negatively affect businesses and the daily lives of Ghanaians. Even before the tour of John Mahama suffered the power cuts, the former president made a demand for a load shedding timetable at Zene in the Sisala West constituency. Today, every day, you sleep and the lights go off. And we know that they are shedding load. They have a problem with generation. Some generation assets are down. They have a problem with paying for gas. They have a problem with paying for fuel. So every day they are shedding between 280 and 480 megawatts of power. But they will not give us a timetable and say you'll be off today, this one will be off tomorrow, because that's what Ghanaians know as Dumso. At the tour of the Greater Accra region, the NDC flag bearer and his entourage walked into a warm conference hall for a meeting with the regional house of chiefs. The traditional authorities and others had to fund themselves to contain the heat. On the day, the power outage rendered the ceiling fans useless, forcing the NDC chair, Johnson Esiedun Ketia, to offer an apology. It is true we didn't create the heat. We have no hand in whether the light should be on or should be off. But the fact that the gathering is occasioned by us, I think we can participate, we can share in the blame of keeping you under this heat. So we apologize profusely for that. The NDC flag bearer volunteered to support the house with a generator set. Between today and tomorrow, we will donate a generator to the House of Chiefs. So that in this era of doom, so if we come and they put off the lights again, at least your generator will be working and will not be feeling as hot as we are feeling currently. In the OT region, power production and distribution is managed by the Northern Electricity Distribution Company. For many, the experience with power outage would be different, but the expectations were not met. I have experienced it myself here. Let me ask, is this doing so? All those who spoke here are worried about the power cuts, and I have also experienced the same. Since we started this program, they have switched off the light for about 10 times. Frequent power cuts at the Nkwanta North constituency was a major concern to all who had the opportunity to speak at an open forum. Mr. Mahama continued to plead with power producers for a solution. <laughs> Yesterday, I experienced the same at Ketekrachi. Let me plead with Netco to get Ketekrachi and its environs a substation. When I get to Accra, I will call their head and plead for the problem to be solved. I my National Service Personnel Association is demanding the payment of a two-month outstanding allowance as old members serving in the public sector. They lament that delay and disbursement of the allowances has become a norm, causing untold hardship on graduates who depend on the stipend for their survival. The association is demanding the immediate payment to avert an industrial action. Flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, has been chastising the government over the delayed payment of the National Service personnel. 
Ye wa ba mu menti se national service allowance. Bosum bedru ni enchi ada. Nse ne so de se ba ye bosum enum ni national service for enchi amoka. Enye se sikano so do so. Ba ye 600 se 700 CDs a month. For five months now, national service personnel haven't been paid. It's not as if the amount is huge. Just 700 Ghana cities. Nakakra and Kodain so at the Besha or Mohose almost some or more my national service five months the Muntia or Moka. The national organizer of the new patriotic party, Henry Nana Boacha, has disclosed that parliamentary candidates will be allocated targets in the upcoming general elections. He says this is aimed at enticing the parliamentary candidates and ensuring that they do not defer from canvassing for votes after being allocated the necessary resources with the mindset that the party is not popular in their constituency and hence cannot win the seat. Mr. Boach was speaking at an inaugural ceremony of the Volta Regional Campaign Team in Ho as the NPP Regional Secretariat in Ho. Our vote. Our parliamentary candidates, we are very happy to have you. We have had instances where we elect parliamentary candidates they go to sleep. They don't work. Simply because, oh, as for this place, we cannot win. As for this place, oh, we have lost already. Please, let me on the authority of His Excellency the next president and the 2024 leadership of the campaign team inform you that you are going to be given targets we will sit with you. We are analyzing every single consequence. You are going to be given targets. So, for instance, if you achieve your target, even if you lose the elections, in our books, you have won the election. Because you see the vote from Bantama linked to the votes in Yape Kusoku, coming to the votes in Jaman South, moving to the vote in Jamoro, coming down to the vote in Odododiodio, going to the votes in Kepu South, linking up to the vote in Krach East, Bandai and the rest. That will make His Excellency the Vice President the next President of the land. So we are not going to count on that, and it has happened before. So for instance, even if you are given target, and at the end of the day, you do not achieve your target, but then you win your constituency, in our books, you have lost. You know why? Because we want parliamentary and then we want presidential as well. We want parliamentary and we want presidential as well. So in as much as you, we are working so hard, please be guided by the targets we are going to give you. Away from the NPP, founder and leader of the Movement for Change, Mr. Alan Kwejo Chermantin, says he will make the eastern region a hub for scientific research and technology innovation in the sub-region when he is given the opportunity to become president of Ghana. He says the initiative forms part of a broader agenda to attract some of the best science and technology resources into the country and beyond. Maxwell Kodeko has more. Addressing the media in Kufuudia after his market tour in the eastern region. Mr. Chiramatin indicated that at least each region across the country 
would be developed to contribute significantly to national development. He says the eastern region will capitalize on its natural resources and proximity to greater Accra and greater Kumasi to handle scientific research and technology. Because of the proximity of the eastern region to both greater Accra and to the Ashanti region, my vision for this region is to build the region as the center of excellence for scientific research and technological innovation. And I think that if we, we focus on that in the future, we'll be able to attract some of the best uh, science and um, uh, research capacities and resources. Mr. Tramatin is also promising to establish the Traders Bank that will give soft loans to support traders and boost their living condition. The program is not a big kind, and I have a idea with the book. Sadly, as one can see, a poor to say, you have a chance in your family. You have a chance in your family. I say, you see, new modern market. You have a man. A new modern market. Reports by Maswo Kudeko. Well, I've been joined in the studio by Courage Nobi, who is Deputy Communications Director for the Movement for Change. Great to have you in the studio. How has your campaign been so far? So far, so good. How many regions so far? So far, we've done four regions. Uh, the butterfly flew from the Greater Accra region, went to the central region, where apart from the market infra modern market infrastructure, um, the Honorable Lancho Martin promised that under his presidency, the central region will become the center for the, the West Africa financial hub. What it means is that he's going to invest there and use the power of policy to attract financial institutions there. Just so that he can create jobs in the local economy for people and that in order that the local economy will begin to thrive. It is strategically positioned between two port cities to facilitate trade uh, within the West African sub-region. Then Butterfly flew from there to the Volta region where he says, in addition to tourism and all that the Volta region is known for, it will be the center for skills development. Skills development. Again, targeting the West African sub-region. You know, by virtue of policy and what he did as minister, we have about 12 automobile companies assembling vehicles in Ghana. They will need skilled labor to be able to, to employ them to be competitive. They've made this place their West African headquarters. So we must begin to look sub-regional and not just internally. And that's why yesterday in Eastern Region, he said, we, your place can become the center for research uh, and uh, scientific innovation, you know, to aid industry. So he, he's the man who has a plan. He has a great transformational plan, and in that plan, he thinks that every region deserves a focal development so that Ghana is not Accra and Accra is not Ghana. Mm. Ghana is beyond Accra. But for that to happen, you need a leadership that deliberately targets development across the various regions so that each region is pivotal in the development agenda of Ghana. And that is why, even on infrastructure, he says, we need to be able to link every regional capital with a dual carriage road. Tell me more about this technology and innovation uh, hub that he wants to turn the Eastern region to. How does he intend to achieve this? Awesome. So one of the most powerful tools that a government has is policy. If you develop the right policies, you're able to attract the right investment into space. Currently where Ghana is right now, we are locked out of the international financial market. We are locked out of the domestic market with the 
uh, kind of haircuts and do that we are having. So what is available to us now is private capital. And so it will take the deliberate policy of government to attract private capital into the region, you know, create the enabling environment in the region so that private enterprise will establish all these centers of excellence and research. For example, I mean, last year we lost the opportunity to have uh, uh, Tesla, you know, the Tesla group have its uh, headquarters for Starlink over here in Ghana. If there were a deliberate policy that says that this is the region of focus for these kinds of innovations, definitely government would just facilitate the arrival and guide them to that particular place where there would have been an enclave developed to make sure that what they want to do thrives. That is the power of financial uh, private capital and the power of government policy in attracting investment and in order to develop a space so that it serves everybody mm -hmm. uh, meaningfully. Making the Eastern region a technological hub is capital intensive. Hope yeah. you know that. Yeah. Have you outsourced your your funding already? Do you know where the source of funding will be coming from of this project? So over time, what happens with many government projects is that the government goes for loan, comes and a, a large part of it is actually misapplied. A large part of the corruption is because of this loan syndrome. He says that we should not be dependent on loan, loan, and loan. The money is with private capital. Private enterprise has the money. So use policy and they will come. An example of what he did is the automobile assembly plan. Government did not spend a dime. But the right policies, we have 12 of them in here working. So they brought the money to develop and then to employ people. So private capital is the target. It's not as though government is going to take money. If government will spend any money at all, it will be facilitatory to ensure that the enabling environment, the platform is created. Outside of that, a large chunk of all that will be happening will be private capital. I mean, look at pharmaceuticals. There are huge pharmaceutical companies that with the right policy will come here to set up research centers. There are huge in, uh, technological companies, huge um, um, how do you call it, engineering companies across the board. And that is what this is about. So his competence, backed by his solid character, I mean, incorruptible, is this famous commitment to ensure that with the right policy, we can get private capital to move money to develop this sector and to create employment for the local people and beyond. You, you said it's part of a broader picture, a and broader you started by mentioning a few. I want you to tell me more about this broader picture you're talking about. So, Alan Martin presented what we call the Great Transformational Plan. He says that is the plan to move Ghana from poverty to prosperity. And so in that plan, there are six clusters. The first one being the economic cluster, there's a governance cluster, there's a social services cluster, there's a natural resource and environment cluster, the behavioral and attitudinal change, and constitutional reforms. He believes that our constitution after 30 years requires to undergo massive reforms. And then he believes that agriculture is one of the, the anchors with which we can develop our economy in addition to infrastructure and a host of other things. It is in the mix of that that this particular um, promise to particular regions. So it's all part of a, a, a broad plan of an interconnected 15-point pillar plan that he's going to use to develop this country. So the difference for him is that he's not just coming to make promises. He has a robust plan that he has developed that tackles every aspect of our national development. And that is what he's saying, that we need to strategically distribute it across the country so that investment goes spread across the country. That is how you stop uh, brain drain. That is how you stop rural urban migration. That is how you build po pro prosperity at the local level so that we begin to thrive again as a country and then we gain our place in the Committee of Nations. So you've done four regions already. How, yes, how so many more? Uh, I think we have about what's 12, your next step? We have 12 more to go. And as you would have noticed with uh, Alan Chemati and his campaign, every movement is very strategic. So in due course, he would inform the media of his next round, and then we'll go there, and he'll give them the good news according to the Butterfly Movement. Harry Nobi, thank you so much. He's thank the you Deputy much, Communications Director of the uh, Movement for Change, Alan Ch who, whose leader is Alan Sherman Ting. Let's go to other stories. Would you vote for me if I promised you the C? Well, leader and founder of the New Force Movement, Nana Kwame Bediako, alias Cheda, is promising to kill the Ashanti region's misfortune of not having the privilege to host the big old ocean. According to him, a massive vote for him on December 7 will see his administration sending the sea to the region to ease the bedding of hauling goods to 
and through the region. Stanley Nibleo has more. It's that time of the year again when politicians awash the country with campaign promises. Leaders of the political parties like the elephant, the umbrella, and the butterfly are already in the lead, flooding electorates with a mental view of what they think heaven is, hoping to secure their vote in the upcoming December polls. It's however safe to say now, Nana Kwame Bediako, aka The Mask, aka Cheddar, has joined the fray and has, in fact, overtaken them all. Should he pass the Electoral Commission's political party's registration criteria and, after, manage to secure 50% plus one of the total valid votes cast on December 7th, 2024, the sea, I mean the ocean, will be extended to the landlocked Ashanti region. I have been around the world and I have seen developments. I wanted to replicate the same in Kumasi. Dubai used to be a desert, but now they can boast of a sea. I would also want to dredge to have the sea in Kumasi so ships can easily transport goods to the region to enhance business fortune. Posted, can't he bring all of them on a excursion to see the sea and go back? Won't that be cheaper? Obiabanye said, at last, the single promise that the Ashantis have been waiting for is here. Hooray! The new force will get not less than 90% in the Ashanti region. Ofori Highest also posted, Chairman go do sa, then flood Kumasi make them all turn aqua impata. Some residents of the Ashanti region have been reacting. I think it's literally absurd. It can't happen. I'm not talking about it being an impossibility, but then let's be honest and let's be realistic. How can you dredge a sea from Accra to Kumasi? Like, it's no, it's not possible. I think it's outrageous because, like, saying that you're bringing a sea to Kumasi is, is out of the ordinary. Like, if you are going to say that, you are bringing a sea because of transportation, then, then you are very, very wrong. Maybe he's just using it as a means of trying to get the attention of like some people. But then, to me, the, the, this idea of bringing a sea to Kumasi is it's not feasible. It's literally impossible, Charlie, because how can you move sea from where? Accra to Kumasi. What if you're talking with Kumasi? Why are you coming to put the sea in Kumasi? You get it? So it's literally impossible. Are you going to dug in gutters, tunnels, or how are you going to do it? It's, it's not possible. Well... If you live in the Ashanti region and your wildest wish is to have the sea on your land or live along the coast, then the mask man, the cheddar, Nana Kwame Bidiako, is your preferred candidate. Make your vote count. ...of the electorate and today's voters' voice is from the Kanishi market. because <laughs> Nese ba umia beto asu. Na wa de normal egua ko mi se da be ya e ma Ghana e wiska be bra e fa amamfo nsem amamfo wi wiska no. Di sa no ma na ba e be si ano kwai. Ama Ghana le bitima ko nenim a enche bia no. Ghana ne Dubai nyina bitima e pepe because se e ba se o ma na njeje tasia en ko fo bi so e na nipa na ko first ka na dia ko e na eja pade ana bi bi atisa. Enti wo nya leader bi o vision sa e di se owura ba umia na so o to aso a atin se Ghana be kama kama. Enti me dia kama jwen dia no, but I shall not be a Mobile and your phone, or bear what's up. Ben, yet to the answer, go, Bessie, and Bell, fine, let her fight. 
Danye komende sa akaseni. She be me na ya mona pe ho. Wo bia me ya na ma akasioni. Ke baba shia, e ba ne ba enyon kome. Le ku ese le ya. She na ba. Na ba enyo ji e pa. Ya shia. Le asku enyo ji ete. Ani ka ji aga wo bia ya na kan suku e. Wo bi ba anya tu ma me bi lo. A ja aga ka ne ba. Na ka ji mo le te suku e. E ba anya president e ye mi bi. The NDC for Kenya no. E ya no kure. Mahama no be di bi. O be tena so no. O me mi ye huin. Ne 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 ya wo ya free so no. A o sa ba no. E dia buta e papa ba biem no wo timi dia sa ma ye biem. Ya dia ye mpe ni biem. Ba o mi ya na ba na na ko tena se na ba o mi ya so mra. No no so me. Si bi ya na na ba ya ye no. Sa so na ba o mi ya so be ye. NDC for ndia. Ye no o mo chi o. O mo wa no. O mo wa no pa. Ye do o mo chi adabi ye be kasa. Enti ye ni o mo chi. Ye dia ni se ba o mi ya na ba. E na ma ma no so ye nto aba en fe ma no. En fe ma no o chena. Omo omo ni munu na e beto aba wan e ni e de e nto ma no e fi se ni pa no abetena so da ye ni mu di obe ye wo di abro e ti nya ni na o sa abetena so bi ma o sa be ma ya bo ta papa bi e nti ye ya ba ma ma no de ye yi na di ba o mi ana e ba so ko e bo na ya le mi lo no gba na e a ja ke di ke se nro ji wo bi a wo se ka ku fu adu we na ke te le e ba nya lu president e je e a wo bi atu ma me bi a ja ga me su na me pa me bi a ba kwa ma no wa ka ja ga wo bi fe minister Alo me fe MP, alo me e go be te sa wo lo. Ani e sa wo, na ba fe school e ka wo. Kuma sokotari wo. E te bo na sikari ka ka. Ko ko e. E te e na sikari ka ka. O ya e ko mi 5, ke na 5. O bi nu e ba e ko mi 10, ke na 10. Enyo ba ko ma si an lo gba me si an lo te. E le wo wo ko lo. There you go, your election brief on election headquarters. Election headquarters is for uninformed electors. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.